Hello everyone and welcome to Average Nerd Talks. Today we're going to be talking about the Digital Markets Act and uh, what Apple is doing to make their iPhones compliant or comply with this act. On Average Nerd Talks, I aim to give you some facts and some of my opinions on this fact. So what we would call the average nerd opinion. So as you may have heard, Apple will be allowing sideloading of apps from iOS 17.4. Now this is only going to be in the EU, so I believe the rest of the world is going to be left out of this. Um, this is the stipulation so far, but I don't know how things may change in the future. That's something we'll have to wait and see. So what exactly is side loading? Well, um, right now, if you want to install something on your iPhone, you probably would go to the App Store, look for the app, and then install it. If you want to install an app which is not on the App Store, well, you're out of luck. There is literally no way to do that. If you're an Android user, however, you have the option to install an application from other sources, meaning you can actually install a separate marketplace on your phone and use that marketplace to install apps and update them. The other thing you can do is download a uh, .apk file. Um, some of you may be aware of what this is. An APK file is essentially an application that you install on your Android device, the same way you do on, say, your computer running Windows or Mac. So the Digital Markets Act is essentially a way to make competition fair and to make, uh, to allow people choice in how they want to install their apps and what marketplaces they want to use. This also means that apps installed from other marketplaces, which are not, you know, Play Store or App Store uh, would not contribute to Apple's revenue or Google's revenue, uh, which they would have made from the app if it was from the official App Store. Apple typically takes a 30% revenue cut of whatever revenue a company makes by selling their apps and in-app purchases on the App Store. I believe the revenue cut is the same for Google, but don't quote me on this. So essentially apps which bypass the App Store or the Play Store will not generate that 30% cut, essentially cutting off Google or Apple from whatever revenue they would have made from the app if it was on the App Store or the Play Store. Now this is more relevant for Apple, of course, because it does not allow sideloading, which Android does. So Apple's typical walled garden approach and their um, justification for this walled garden approach is to ensure user privacy, user security, and um, Freedom from malware, well, at least that's what they like to call it. Um, however, there are some caveats which we will discuss here. So Apple released a new document called the DMA Compliance Document, wherein they talk about how they will be complying with the, uh, the DMA, which is the Digital Markets Act, and uh, how it would be applicable to iPhone users, and also stuff about how it would compromise security, and it's not good, and how they're not happy about it. Uh, they have also included testimonials, well, not testimonials really, um, emails which Tim Cook has received from the general public about how they're not happy with the DMA and uh, how it compromises the security of the device. So let's go over the uh, DMA compliance document from Apple and I'll give you my take on it and my opinion on it, but here it is. So one of these emails actually states, uh, if I wanted an open source operating system like Google or Samsung, I would have bought them. The main, and I can't say this loud enough, main reason I buy and have an Apple phone is because you're a closed iOS and the iOS is more secure than Android. But if you're going to open the gates and no longer be as safe, then I might as well switch over. Please keep iOS closed, please. Making an operating system open does not make it less secure. So. If you've ever tried to install an application from outside the Google Play Store, you know your phone starts complaining. It says, okay, this is an unknown source. You know, your phone is not secure, but if you still wanna do it, hey, you you know what? I'm not gonna stop you. That's kind of what I think Apple would be going with when they're opening up the iOS. I don't think that they're just gonna be like, okay, you can install whatever you want on your phone and uh, we're not gonna stop you. We're not gonna give you any notifications whatsoever. I don't think that's how it's gonna be implemented. So if you're an iPhone user and you think, okay, so iOS 17.4 is gonna be less secure in any way, but not really. 
if you really care about security and you want to keep your phone secure then don't install apps from anywhere outside the app store you're not gonna have less choice you're gonna have more choice right and then there's this video let's take a look at this now back to the dma because the dma has an admirable mission to promote competition and to make sure that consumers have choice and I'm a big fan of both of these goals. But as an engineer who wants iPhone to stay as secure as possible for our users, there is one part I worry about. And that's the provision that would require iPhone to allow sideloading. Because in the name of giving users more choice, that one provision would take away consumers' choice of a more secure platform. So evidently for Apple, less choice is more choice? Here's another one. I'm feeling increasingly more concerned and scared about my digital privacy and online safety in the EU. As an EU citizen and Apple user, I always believed to have had the perfect balance between regulatory protection like GDPR and Apple safety features like app tracking, transparency, and app store. However, recently this has changed. It is a scary idea, but it looks like new regulation from the EU Commission would compromise many of those safety and security features I currently rely on. Now going back to what the previous email said as well, opening up a system to allow applications to be installed from other sources does not compromise its security. Just because you have the option to do it does not mean that you should be doing it. Giving more choice to users to use whatever app store they want or whatever marketplace they want does not compromise the security of the device. That's, um, it basically just gives them more choice. If you feel that does compromise the security of your device, don't use an external app store. Now here's a more um, sane email that uh, amongst all of these, the other ones which seem to be pretty angry at Apple for doing what they're doing. Um, thank you for leading a company that puts customers first, no matter if it's in regards to their privacy, health, or human rights. As an EU citizen, I will not be allowing sideloading on my devices. Now, at first glance, this may seem kind of hostile, but um, I don't know if uh, this person means that they won't be allowing it, as in they'll be disabling sideloading on their side, or they don't want Apple to allow sideloading on um, iOS. But I'm gonna assume the former, as in they don't want to allow sideloading on their own personal device, on their own personal iPhone, which I think is a very reasonable stance, right? Now, I'm personally an Android user, but that doesn't mean that I'm gonna go seeking out applications from the internet and installing them on my phone. If an application exists on the Play Store and I can install it directly from there, then I don't see a reason why I would go seeking it out. So this argument that, um, you know, sideloading makes and makes a device less secure is, is kind of questionable at best. Now, this is a very interesting paragraph in this document. It says, uh, some developers will choose to make their apps exclusively available on alternative marketplaces and these could include apps that users, jobs, uh, or schools require or that they need to stay connected with family and friends. Apps that users have to download even if they would prefer not to use and use alternative app marketplaces. Developers will ultimately control where huge numbers of EU users must go to obtain the apps they need, whether or not users are satisfied with the protections provided by these stores. So let me get this straight. So Apple has a problem with developers controlling uh, where users download their apps from, but Apple has no problem doing it themselves. So what Apple here is trying to say is that uh, this, this is this is a statement by Apple. This is this is within their documentation, right? This is a document from Apple's website. I'll put a link in the description below so you can download it and take a look at it yourself. What they're trying to say is that developers having control over where their apps should go is a problem. Here's another one. We are very satisfied with iOS because it is not like Android. It has high security, it has a user-friendly interface, and it never slows down. But we heard from sources that sideloading is possible in iOS 17. 
and it can be downloaded from stores other than the app store it can also be downloaded um okay please stop doing this we just want to download from the app store and ensure our security please do not enable side loading we want ios to be like the old one with strict rules and extremely high security so you want your freedom to be taken away by a company that does not do things in your best interest think a lot of people understand what side loading actually means and what opening up an operating system to other applications actually means right it's not going to compromise your security just because you have the option to do something right adding an option to do something is not a bad thing <laughs> right just because you can install apps from outside the app store does not mean that your operating system is suddenly going to be insecure okay now take a look at mac os for example you can use the Mac OS's inbuilt software, whatever thingy it's called, to install your apps, but how often do you actually do that, right? If you want, say, Discord on your computer, you're probably gonna go online, go to discord.com and download the app. But we can argue that Mac OS is a pretty solid, secure system, right? So, obviously, giving people the choice to change whatever they want or install whatever they want in a device that they have bought and they own is not exactly a bad thing and it does not mean that you're going to be compromising security in any way. I find it strange that people find that not being able to do whatever you want with your device is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, that's something I'm, I'm having trouble understanding. So if you own something, which means you have paid good money for it, you have bought it, you should be able to do whatever you want with it. The idea is that if you have an iPhone, you own the hardware. Sure, okay, you don't own the copyrights to the software. I'll give you that, I'll give you that. But um, if I own the device, if I own the hardware, well, there are a few things, there are a few, there are a few assumptions that I'd like to make. Well, one is that I should be able to wipe the operating system on that hardware and install whatever software that I want. Or And two, I should have the right to repair it whatever I want, whenever I want, and using whatever tools I want, right? This is also, well, this will, will be going into right to repair, which is probably for a different video. But the point I'm trying to make here is that if you own something, you have the right to do whatever you want with it. And Apple taking away that right is not making the device more secure, it's just taking away your choice while leaving the security there as is so don't let anyone tell you then you know side loading an application is suddenly going to take away security from an iphone no no if you've never used an an external app store and if you don't plan to use an external app store to install your apps uh your security is going to be intact and nothing's really going to change Thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed this video, press like and let me know what your thoughts are on the Digital Markets Act and whether you think what Apple is doing to comply with them is actually justified. Is it not justified? I'd like to know what you think. Leave your thoughts down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.